Mm. Our guests are here, so we got a break. Oh, okay. Who, who's coming in, Jimmy? Uh, you saw the documentary. Oh, Patrick, I liked it very much. Patrick Kennedy. Yes, and uh, James Thompson from Chris, the, James, uh, Chris Thompson. James Thompson. Yes. I think Chris did the documentary, but Patrick was the uh, detective that actually, uh, after Dahmer was uh, arrested, he actually sat with Dahmer and and I believe got the confession and really really spoke to him uh, extensively. Oh. Okay. Before he was, you know, uh, known by everyone. So he actually, you know, it's very, very interesting to hear him talk. Right. You could just tell who the cop is by the name. Yeah. Detective Patrick Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. You know, nice He Irish sounds like guy. a cop, right? Who's nice in Irish cop. Who got the who got the confession? Pat Kennedy. Pat Matt. Kennedy did. Pat. Pat oh, did. Hey, hey, Kennedy got it again. Yeah. <laughs> of yeah. course. Pat Kennedy don't fuck around. <laughs> yeah, but he, it was really, really interesting to hear him uh, discuss this Good. You know, relationship with Donald. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk to them next. One. Might have run out of time for today because we have a Scott and Todd song parody we, we were going to do today. <laughs> and we'll just mention it. Dan Marino has a love child. What? Cool. What? Yeah. Dan love Marino's child? Love child. Misunderstood? Yeah. Yes. Something like Afraid, that. Afraid? Ashamed? Misunderstood? Yes. Oh, that, something that, like that. That type of love child. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're going with a thematic uh, song intro for this segment. What's the theme? Psycho Killer. Ah, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah, like you this. look like a cop. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, there's no yeah. question oh, who the cop is. We can figure out which one is the cop and which one is the yeah, documentary filmmaker. Nice. <laughs> retired. Holy retired. retired detective. Not yes. Retired. Thank you for your service. Yes. He still carries a gun. Hi guys. Indeed. Just these pythons. Wow, look oh. at that, gentlemen. Look at that mustache. Please. I know that. How long have you had the mustache? Fifty-nine years. Yeah, you're one of those uh, guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're one of those guys who refuses to shave. I've it. shaved it a couple times when my wife. Are we on the air? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, we are. Isn't that amazing? We just. Start the show. Yeah, like we'll that. we'll do I all the other it stuff in a minute. When my wife wanted to feel like she was with somebody else. Oh, there <laughs> you go. He's gonna talk Hopefully shit about his wife, and he had to ask you guys, and then he's going to do it anyway. Yeah, we're on the air. Wait a minute. That is that, that would fit in great, also uh, during the gritty seventies uh, and eighties, right? Something like that, right? Very impressive. <laughs> yes, that's a big must. That might be the biggest great, mustache I've ever like seen. Time I saw the movie, um, yeah. was down at South by Southwest. I didn't watch it, and right. it was on like a fifty foot screen. Oh wow! So that's you know what it's like to hear yourself. Or to see yourself. Yeah, we love that's it. All a sudden, I saw love like, voices. this 50 foot mustache. <laughs> yeah, that's a I'm lot. I'm going to go home and trim my mustache. <laughs> nah. Nah, it's a good ridiculous. look for you. It works. Man. It You're works. Big, big giant of a guy, too. Fuck. How yeah. tall are you? I used to be six, seven and a half, but after my knee operation, I think I'm only six, seven. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah, knees. Lost a little bit. You don't realize that Too when you're bad. watching knees a guy. Out of Milwaukee. Oh, Jesus. No, you're right. <laughs> guy sit, <laughs> sitting there being interviewed. Like, I, I watched the, uh, the documentary. It's like you don't realize, like, you're a big, imposing yeah. figure. Boy, um, you must have had a ball before these cameras and everything that <laughs> law enforcement has to deal with now. Oh, boy, I bet you Wait. could tell a, a spin a yarn or two. We, we know some of the old school guys. So. Oh, I love talking to so You don't have to say school. anything. We know. Old we know you've detectives. seen some stuff. Evil. Yeah. They're evil. Some of the stuff that might have been uh, not quite on the books. You learn that from uh, the streets. Yeah, sometimes, you know what? You don't even have to take the perp back to the station house. <laughs> ah, you can just deal with them. A little street justice. A little uh, wood shampoo, they call it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you get more with uh, honey than vinegar. But yeah, All a lot right. of times you let the guy go because they were useful to you later on. There you go. Exactly. God, I love the old school guys. God, they, you... they had to play it. They, they knew how to play in the streets, oh, yeah. huh? Wow. Yeah. How did you uh, stumble onto becoming a, a part of the, the Dahmer case? Like, you were just, a, you were just a, a regular working detective. Right. The way they run it in Milwaukee is uh, they just have the homicide units, and the next stiff up, that you get it. So mm. I walked in. I was third shift. I walked in that morning. Uh, Jeez. Just is that what they call it, the next stiff up? Well, the next, <laughs> next, we used to have a, a saying in Milwaukee that our day begins when yours ends. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's blue humor. It's humor. The, ah, I can I see that on a the t-shirt. Humor. You can sell some t-shirts with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. But in oh, Milwaukee, it was, um, it's just the next unit that was up. And right. My unit was up. I just walked in, and uh, it's, before I could even get to my desk, uh, about 10 to 12 at midnight, uh, the lieutenant called me over and said, I got a couple of excited cops on the phone that wow. said they uh, they got a head in the refrigerator. Jesus. Wow. And he didn't even really believe it. Uh, this guy was Lieutenant uh, Roosevelt Harrell. He was the highest ranking black uh, officer on the department at the time. Uh, Milwaukee had gone through a lot of racial problems mm -hmm. with uh, the police department. T totally an excellent guy, though. Um, and he said, it sounds like bullshit to me, Pat, but go check it out. So on the way up there, I was with this young Polish kid from the south side, Mike Dubas, uh, and we were making jokes. And I was like, not, 
lose our head over this investigation. <laughs> and it was, you know, it just seemed so weird. Uh -huh. Had you met Dahmer at this point yet or no? No, never no. met him before. I, I, and I want to ask just because you look like a young guy. How young were you back then? 20 years ago, I was 38 years old. Wow. So I was huh. young. I was a lot younger. Yeah. I'll be 59 next week. Next month. So, so you were on the job for a while by the time you were oh, yeah, yeah. I'd walked the beat for several years and hacked the squad uh, for about nine years. Uh, Saving the world, full of piss and vinegar. Well, I was married with three kids. I was trying to raise a family. Oh, okay. <laughs> or that. And it was a solid <laughs> job <laughs> with benefits. Uh, All right, or that. Whatever. <laughs> Health insurance, you know. <laughs> I get you. Stability. Did you uh, see Q&A with Nick Nolte? I did. Oh, it's, I feel like I I'm did. sitting next to Mike Brennan. It makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Big guy with a mustache, old yeah. school. So you're making the jokes on the way over. We, we know you cops like to make jokes because it's, you know. It is. Uh, lightens up the mood a little bit. Personnel. The nurses, too, are like that. Yeah, yeah. You got to. But it was a very hot, sticky night. I know it gets hot here, too, but it gets real muggy in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. too. And it was one of those nights where it didn't drop below, like, 85 and... 100% humidity, and the foyer of this building is a big glass enclosed foyer, and as soon as you walked in there, you, you could smell the dead body. Wow. And most, and I looked at Mike, I said, wow, maybe this ain't going to be bullshit. Because, <laughs> uh, and uh, actually, I took off my coat then, because um, certain fibrous coats, uh, if you're around real dead body, it'll seep, seep into the to the clothes. It's like Chinese food or what? something, where you yeah, smell it when so, you leave the restaurant. Jesus. Was he, uh, were there other people living in that structure? Oh, yeah, it was a three-story, 36-unit rectangular the building. with people? Yeah, that's why I asked. They did what? Well, actually, several people had complained uh, about the over the months about the smell and to the building super who I talked to. And uh, when he went to talk to Jeffrey Dahmer about it, he had a 55-gallon uh, fish tank. Uh, and... He told him that he went to Chicago for the weekend and the power went out in his fish tank and all his fish died and he left them around there and that's what was causing the smell. And he actually sh showed him the plastic garbage barrel that he was using to emulsify people with the muriatic acid. And the guy said, well, just get rid He said, that's where I put all the fish. And he said, well, just get rid of that. Oh my God. So, and actually the night we went in there, um, very clearly displayed were all kinds of solvents, cleaners, air fresheners, uh, the 57-gallon uh a tank that he had the four bodies in. He had by a window in his bedroom with a fan behind it blowing the... Wow, it man, so, this is some calculated stuff. Oh, yeah, he said that he the smell was always a problem. That's, that was what he said. Just couldn't get rid of that fucking but, stench. Oh. But how were you guys tipped off that there were uh, heads in, in, in this place at this point? Uh, well, what had happened is hmm. um, his last victim... Uh, he had run out of the Halcyon tablets. And right. Jeffrey Dahmer was an alcoholic. He was always gassed, always gassed. Mm. And he thought he could drink this guy under the table. And he said they put down a bottle of 151 rum. They were both gassed. And he had offered this guy $150 to come home for oral sex and to watch uh, movies and to take some, some uh, photographs of him, mm -hmm. which he was... Well, let's not forget that everybody who went to his apartment went there willingly. Right, I mean, right. He didn't drag nobody there. He offered, mostly offered them money for sex and photographs. Well, he had taken a couple photographs of this guy in his whitey tighties, and then he wanted to get a, a, a bondage shot of him. Mm. He got the one handcuff on him, but when he tried to put the other handcuff on it, I talked to the guy, I said, it just didn't seem right. Mm. And I told him, no, I don't want to do that. And Jeff's thought to me was that he had ran out of the Halcyon tab, so he thought he'd get this guy drunk, and once he got him handcuffed, then he could just strangle right, him. What's right. a Halcyon tablet? Halcyon was a very strong um, sleeping pill that came out in um, during the Gulf War. If you remember President, the first Bush, the good Bush, not Shrub, uh, <laughs> he actually took it because he couldn't get to sleep during the, uh, and it was a brand new um, sleeping mm. tablet, that, and it was... Uh, it was marketed that it, it was the kind, kind of pill that where you didn't just get drowsy, but you took it and you're out for a while. So Would he slip it into their drinks? Yes. Oh, Before he, when he knew he was going to kill somebody, he would crush up five to seven of them and had them in a cup. Oh, home. man. So when he brought the guy home, if he knew he was going to kill this guy and keep this guy, the first thing he would do is offer him a drink, and he would pour him a rum and coke. Holy shit. And once you drank that... <laughs> You're out. Why did he get yeah. lazy and not have that on hand? Well, he was one of the first guys to do what we call doctor shopping. Um... He was a third shift worker at the chocolate factory, and he, he went to several different doctors and told them, I can't sleep at night, and mm. I found this Halcyon. Actually, there was an article in Time magazine about Halcyon in 1991, and that's where he heard about it. Wow. So he asked about it, and uh, the article was about Bush taking it. <laughs> and so he'd ask for it by name, and there were several doctors that gave him pills, but he, he just ran out of okay, them. Okay, I got you. Damn. So he brings this guy home. He does not have him pilled up, and he said he, the guy instinct kicked in and said there's something wrong with him. Well, he didn't want to. He felt, said he just felt 
weird about it. So when he wouldn't do it, then he and Jeffrey got into a fight. And during the fight, Dahmer picked up a knife and he ran out the apartment, ran down the hall, ran out into the street, and down the block was a couple of Milwaukee coppers on a completely different assignment. So here it is, uh, 11.30 at night, quarter after 11 at night uh, on a hot, muggy night. Uh And this guy pounds on the window. The two cops look at, here's a black male with just whitey tidy underwears on and handcuffs. And the first thing they thought was, hey, they got in the air and they said, is anybody (laughs) missing any equipment? Like, you know, it's very embarrassing when a prisoner gets away from you. It ruins your reputation. Uh (laughs) But when nobody answered, um, they got out and said, hey, what the fuck's going on? And... He said, well, I met this guy, and we were fucking around, and he wanted to take some pictures, and I didn't want to do the bondage, and we got in a fight, and he pulled a knife on me, and I'm out here. And I said, well, do you want to press charges? Let's take them. He goes, no, I really don't want to press charges. I just mm, want this man. handcuff off. Well, the two coppers got out, but we had Smith & Wesson handcuffs, oh, and Dahmer had a shit. different type. Because he had so, different handcuff no keys. Shit. They had to go back to so Dahmer's So the key house. didn't work. Oh, God So damn. they followed the guy back, knocked on the door. Jeffrey Dahmer opened the door, and he was gassed. And they even said to him, look, we don't care what you freaks are doing in there, oh. but just give us the handcuff key. Well, he kind of fumbled around, and like most cops, they just bogarted their way in. <laughs> and he kind of fumbled around, so they started looking for the key, but there was no key because he always got the handcuffs back by cutting off their hands. <laughs> oh, my Holy God. Holy shit. So, uh, there ain't no key, Ralph. You got to uh, boot <laughs> your way out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He got, the, he got them off by cutting off their fucking hands. So the one officer went into the bedroom and found uh, uh, the top drawer open a little bit, and there was all these Polaroid photographs in there. Mm. So he picked up a photograph, and he saw the photograph of a, of a dismembered and cut open body. Wow. And he told me, he said, the, pat, the first thing I thought was, uh, where did this guy get these autopsy photographs from? <sighs> but he said, the more I looked at the photograph, the more I realized the room in the photograph was the room that I was standing <laughs> oh, in. Oh, God. That's right so he said to his moment. partner in the next room, it was an efficiency apartment, like one main room, a bathroom, and a yeah. little bedroom. Uh-huh. Uh, he said, you better handcuff this guy. And when he said that, all hell broke loose, and there was a big, big fight. And oh, these were really? Two big, strong Milwaukee cops, one 6'4", about 220, the other about 6'1", and kind of barrel-chested. The taller guy was kind of a nice guy, but the other guy, I wouldn't call him an assaultive officer, but the kind that would respond in kind of... <laughs> sure. uh, and, How big uh, was Dahmer, by the way? He was a good-sized man. He was huh. 6'1", about 175 pounds. Mm. Um, good-looking guy. Uh, the night that I arrested him, I had to take all his clothes off, him, so I got to see him buck naked. I, there Ooh. wasn't an inch of, of body <laughs> fat on the guy. I mean, he was... Yeah. A, I hear humans not are a, lean. a muscular <laughs> guy, but not unmuscular as right. well. Um so, yeah, it, these two officers uh, had a hell of a fight with this guy. Wow. When I got there, um, well, after they, they finally got him corralled, and like any place, it's not good to fight with the police. Uh, so <sighs> after they finally got him corralled and handcuffed, and they had him handcuffed the way we used to do it, where you hogtied people, where you would handcuff <laughs> behind their back and cuff their, their legs and put them on their stomach and then cuff your legs to your hands. Oh, but, you know, wow. we ended up killing yeah. everybody like that. Or, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> They found that people that were big or that were under um, some kind of drugs, they, a lot of guys died in that Suffocate position. Suffocate in right. some way, shape, or form. So yeah. they changed that. Before, when I first came on, they taught us to choke people out. Yeah, the choke I mean, hold and cho- yeah, choke them out. Some people never like- came back. So they went from that to this other one. <laughs> and now they, they don't do that anymore. But at yeah, the time, that yeah. was standard. And if you saw a prisoner like that, you knew that some bad shit had uh-huh. happened. Yeah. So when I got there, he was bleeding from the mouth. And had a, a massive like rug burn from where you know, like rolling they around were, on the yeah. rug, and the, these Oof. two officers, I mean, one was outside the door, his hair was sticking up, his his Sam Brown was to the side, he was all disheveled, hot night, so he was dripping with oh, sweat. Oh shit! And I I I, so I walked up, I said, Ralph, what what's going on? He goes, go look in the refrigerator. Oh Holy wow! Holy shit! So then I walked into the apartment, and there was Dahmer on the ground, and he was he was crying. I mean, he was kind he of knew whining. It was over, Johnny. And the other, yeah. the, yeah, once that fridge door fucking <laughs> suction <laughs> sound came, officer, <laughs> the bigger officer had his uh, knee in, in him, and I said to him, "I said, Ralph, what is going?" And he looked the same. His eyes were real big, and he was sweating. He was wiping his face with a hanky, and I said, "What's going on?" He goes, "Just look in the refrigerator." So that's when I went and opened up the refrigerator, and 
once you opened it up, it was an apartment sized refrigerator. It was empty on the inside, except on the door, there was condiments, you know, A1 sauce, mm. Liam Perrins, mustard and ketchup. <laughs> Not much but in the middle, oh, the only thing that well. was in the middle of right. this refrigerator <laughs> in the back was an open box of Arm & Hammer uh, uh. baking soda. And I thought, you know, my mom used to do that to kind of freshen the thing. <laughs> yeah. And a box containing uh, the head of a black male. And it was freshly severed and fresh. And the eyes and the mouth were like, like that. Wide so open. Wow. When I opened wow. it up, uh, my partner said I backed up to him and screamed like a girl. Oh, shit. I didn't. But I do remember thinking, oh, man, I got to get the fuck out of here. That's I mean, it was really, I mean, I knew I wasn't horrible. in danger. But it's so irrational fear to see something like this. Yes. And I'd only been working the homicide unit for about a year. So I knew, hey, if you walk out of here, that's the end of your career. But, uh, <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's how it started. Wait, wait, wait. You wow. said there were two, though. Where was the other one? The two cops? No, you said there were two uh, heads, no? No, in the refrigerator, just one head. Now, we found in a little freezer, we found seven other frozen heads. Okay. <laughs> and we found three skulls. Right. Uh, so Pat that, took Dahmer downtown, and then the medical examiner, who we also interviewed for the film, Dr. Jeffrey Jensen, sort of came in with his guys and started <sighs> taking out all the rest of the evidence. And that's when the, the size and the scope of the, of the scene came actually right. came. I left my partner there. Harrell showed. Well, first I saw, I said, don't anybody touch anything. Yeah. We got a boss down there, and he said, take him downtown, Pat. So my partner actually got the shittier end of the deal. He spent the next 24 hours, you know, discovering penises and heads <laughs> and all in Skulls, the apartment. All, oh yeah, it was, where was all that stuff? It in was general? all in there, right? And oh, where? They're telling like, you Pat has five minutes because these what? guys have these guys have TV. Wow, these guys have TV Are to you promote. Me? Yes, oh my God, this I, is I, fascinating. I was hoping you could stay till ten thirty. <laughs> they have TV. I love Let's, this stuff. Okay, um, hey, can we stay? They're, they're yeah, telling right. us they have TV. We got it. Wow. This is a really big radio show. You should stay right here. I'm telling you yeah, right now, is, sir. Uh, the, uh, if you want people to see this film, you stay right the fuck <laughs> where you are. When you met wow. Dahmer, I, I have to ask you that. Yeah. What was the first, how did you actually, you're meeting with him, with this guy, who I don't think you understood the scope of what a psycho he was at that moment, right? No, but I mean, I'd never seen, I mean, I'd had your run-of-the-mill murder, and I've had my run-of-the-mill interrogation and confession, but... Uh, this was different from the beginning because, well, first of all, he was, they beat the snot out of him because you just don't fight with the police. So as I, we were taking him from the uh, uh, apartment to the paddy wagon, he was already, you could see, dejected. And, mm. and uh, uh, So I decided I would take a kind of a lighter tact with him. And um, I, I shook his hand, called him Pat. I went and got a cup of coffee and cigarettes and... The first thing I said to him was, oh, so what can you tell me about that in the refrigerator? <laughs> oh, shit. And he, his first statement to me was, well, his first statement to me was, you're not going to let him beat me anymore. Oh, and wow. I said, no, no one's going to deal with you anymore but me. Uh, and I had him in that little 9 by 11 room. Uh, and actually, when I told the cop to take the cuffs off, and the cop said, Pat, you don't want to take the cuffs off this guy because I fought with him and he's no <laughs> pussy. And I said, <laughs> I, I said to him, if we take the cuffs off you, if you promise you behave, you know, I'll get you a coffee and cigarettes and we can relax. And he just shook his head. But the first words he said after they took the cuffs off, the cop said, I'll be right outside the door, Pat. As soon as he closed the door, he said, uh, you're not going to let him hit me anymore. I said, oh, no. wow. He really wow. didn't want to get hit anymore. So huh? it was the old good guy, <laughs> oh. bad guy from the beginning. So I decided wow. to be the good guy. But you sure. knew Pat that taking the cuffs off, you because you were a six, seven guy, so you weren't worried about yeah, him. Yeah, I wasn't really worried about it. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah. but, but you never know. I, I've never inter I never interrogated a guy with cuffs on. That's right. just not a good thing. Uh -huh. He didn't want, want to, to fuck up his suit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Comfortable. So. so you take the cuffs off him and you sit with him. Yeah, and then I introduced myself to him and I said, I'm the one who's going to be dealing with you on this. I said, but. Before we get started, do you smoke or would you like a cup of coffee? And he looked up at me and said, yeah, I'd like both. So I went got one and came back. And when I asked him about the, the head in the refrigerator, he said, I don't feel it's in my best interest to talk about that. Oh. So I said, well, we don't have to talk about it. Oh, we can right. talk about other things. How about the Lee and Perrin? Why, why don't we start <laughs> there? And we'll work our way up to the head. No, uh, he was very... Uh, he, he says, what's going to happen to me if I don't talk to you? So I kind of explained to him the booking process, and he seemed to understand it because he, he had been arrested before mm -hmm. for lewd and lascivious. And, uh, but then he asked me, can I get my own cell? And mm. I knew then that he knew about the bullpen. If you know about any bullpen, it's just a shithole where, you know, everybody and their brother's in there. It's mm -hmm. disgusting, and he didn't want to go there. So I could pick up on that right away. I said, no, it's a Friday night, and the bullpen there is packed. You go. I said, there's no way you're going to get a single cell. A little leverage. I said, if you stay here with me, we could talk about And we did talk about things for about three and a half hours before he crapped out to me. So mm -hmm. 
What stuff did you talk about that I had nothing well, to do I with? Well, I picked up that he was an alcoholic, and right. I myself, uh, like most coppers, suffer from old John Barleycorn, and I had hmm. my own battles with it. So I was knowledgeable about AA. I kind of 12-stepped him, but we talked for about an hour about religion. He grew up in a very uh, a strong Lutheran religious family. Hmm. We talked about homosexuality. We talked about whether there was a God or not. Uh, we talk- He loved his family, especially his grandmother. Um so for about three and a, and and to tell you the truth, if you talk to most homicide detectives, the the typical homicide confession takes about three and a half hours before hmm. they they start to to get into that defeated position and start right. to tell you what happened. So it was right about that. But every time when he finally did, he said, um, "If I tell you, you'll be famous." I said, "Oh come on, man! I've seen a bunch of shit before. This yeah. ain't gonna be anything." And then he said, "But if I do tell you, you'll hate me and you won't want to talk to me anymore." I said, "No, no, I'll stick with you." So he goes, well, if I am going to tell you, I'm going to start at the beginning. And mm. he told me about his first homicide back in Bath, Ohio, when he was 18, 13 years ago. Right. So I put my pen down. I'm listening to him. And then he talked about going to the Army in Ohio and getting kicked out and then moving here to Grandma's where he started killing again. And when he got to about his second or third, I said, well, take a break. I went to get some more coffee. And the lieutenant came out to me and said, is he talking? I said, well, yeah, he's... He's talking, but I, I said, I don't think he's going to help us. I said, mm-hmm. he's a, he's told me he's killed like five or six people, and he hasn't even told me about the guy in the refrigerator. You know, I said, I think he's a bullshitter. And he goes, no, 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 your partner called. They found 11 heads. And oh, they my God. So I, so I went back <laughs> in. I took my pen out. I said, okay, let's start over again. <laughs> let's start Fuck. from the beginning. I, it's because, important to say, to say when you were talking to him at that point, you just thought didn't believe there was the one head in his refrigerator. Bullshit. I'm waiting to find Holy out about this head I saw. Fuck, that was he's yeah. telling me about somebody about. he killed 13 years ago and two years ago. And, and it turned out to be another four or five before we finally got to the head. Got but to the I head. I went back in the... with a whole new attitude about the interrogation. No shit. And, wow. And did you, did you find yourself liking him at all? I, I'm sure it's different to, to actually talk to somebody than it is to hear about them. Well, like I said in the movie to Chris, who... Uh, really got a lot out of me. I'm talking more about it now, but 20 years ago, I wouldn't have liked this. Right. Uh, when you spend six weeks with somebody, 10, 12 hours a day, you have breakfast with them, lunch mm. with them. Uh, he, yeah, I, I form, you know, detectives are trained to build rapport, to form a mm-hmm. relationship. But um, yeah, I, I kind of, he was a pathetic fuck, okay? He could yeah. not, he couldn't make an emotional connection with anybody. I even asked him at one time, I said, why don't you just get a boyfriend? Why, you yeah. know, why did you have to kill everybody? And to me, he was just this really pathetic human being who on the other side had this obsession with this this constant pursuit of, the, of this hedonistic, pleasurable lifestyle where he lived in an area, all of his money went towards alcohol and the pursuit of pleasure sexually uh, mm-hmm. and his drugs. I mean, that was his whole... Wow reason for living. So he was a very, <laughs> and as a lover of the people that we talk, he was a very selfish lover. I mean, he was a giver, not a taker. and uh, A giver, not a taker? A selfish or selfless? Selfish oh. lover. If you're homosexual oh. and you're selfish... <laughs> you're giving. Oh, you, oh, okay. You're, uh, you're, you got uh, the, it with the hand motion. You're the train. You're the, you're the train, not the tunnel, as they say. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did, I got to ask you because obviously we're running out of time. But I got to ask you, based on what you just said about you know building a rapport and everything, how did you feel when he was killed? Did you, everybody ask that? And yeah. To tell you the truth, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it, but I felt really shitty about did it. Did you? To tell you the truth, I'm, I'm a Catholic and I'm against the, mm-hmm. uh, capital punishment, and. I felt sorry for the guy. I mean, yeah. he was such a pathetic individual. And like I told Chris in his movie, I felt bad that I felt bad for him. I mean, it made me what I, I remember mm. thinking, right. what is there about me that connected with this freak right. that I feel so it's bad make about? make a question it. yourself. How, how yeah, did you hear really, it? Somebody called you or you were the news? Yeah, I walked into, I, by that time I had been day shift. Um, actually, the Dahmer thing kind of helped my career a little bit. I finally <laughs> got off the late shift and you know, got yeah. to the day shift and... Um, uh, the captain called me over. He was on the phone with the correctional facility when he was mm. murdered. They called right down right away. And so I, I walked in. It was the same thing. I walked in. I took my coat off. He goes, hey, Kennedy, they killed your boy. Your boy. And I said, what are you talking about? And I, I got on the phone with the guy there and told me what happened. So, now, wow. how, how long had you had it been since you had any contact with him, since the, the professional aspect of it, the questioning and everything? Of the the last time I talked to him was uh, when he was sentenced to 956 years in prison. <laughs> and I shook his hand as he went off. To, to jail. And that what was 
said. Him. And he had requested to talk to me a couple of times, uh, but I didn't really mm. want to anymore. After okay. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happened was um, my partner, Dennis Murphy, went up to the correctional institution where he was at for another uh, – Homicide. You know, people in jail are always saying, we'll give you some information if you can get me out. So he was up there talking to somebody, and he went to visit Jeff. And he told me that Jeff had put on 35 pounds and had gone from a very straight-acting male, gay male, to a stereotypical, almost flamboyant one. Wow. And told him that he is requested to get out of segregation because for the three and a half years he was there, they kept him in a nine by twelve windowless cell, twenty three hours a day, mm. and only one hour a day he was put like in a room where it was open to the sky, so you could see the fresh air wow. by himself. And he told Dennis, he goes, "I'm going crazy here. I can't take it. You know, just to be locked like with no communication." And he even said, "I know that when I get put in the general population, they'll kill me." And it was within three months that he was put in the general wow. population. Wow! Oh, no one knows that, that he was murdered. Wow. No kidding. And but you, it really upset you when he was killed. Like, and well, it, I don't like to say upset like I'm some kind of a no, no, no. But but you talk about the documentary. I it was really interesting. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I, I was supposed to go to class that night because I was going on to get my graduate degree because I wanted to get out of the police department. I was frying being mm. a homicide detective, and. Uh, I turned around and went back home and went to my little apartment, just sat there by myself. And I don't know. I, It was another one of those things where I felt bad about feeling bad. No shit, yeah. So, yeah no one sense. thinks you're a pussy. You're a 6'7 uh, homicide detective. I, yeah, right. there's no one's mistaking you. a 6'7 what? pussy <laughs> homicide detective. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first inkling that this was a massive case, by the oh, way? Oh, when I saw the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, there's well, been other you situations. No as but well. where you realize, holy fuck, this is going to be an international story. Yeah. That's what I mean. No, I really didn't think it would be an international. So no. I was surprised the next day when <laughs> I came into work, huh. and there was literally a media s a circus, circus right. outside Side. the police. So I knew instinctively that you didn't want to fuck this case up, right? Uh -huh. uh, you had to do it right. So um, yeah, I can. And I was young. I was energetic. It was exciting. It was a good time. To, you know, when you're in your thirties and you're doing what you've been trying to do. So. I, I can honestly say for those six weeks, I poured everything. That's a career case into, right yeah, there. Yeah, it was. I knew it would make or break me. Uh -huh. Did you uh, chase that high afterwards? Like uh, another case that was high profile? What was, no, the, actually, what was the second oh, oh, no. What was the second case? We then? found a finger in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. You yeah. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that during this time, anybody that, you know, every we got reports all the time. There's bones over here. And I mean, they're always, you know, ribs, right. rib <laughs> yeah. bones and chicken yeah. bones. Yeah. And, you know, but they didn't check it all out. But, that was oh. it for you. Though. You uh, knew that was going to be the day it. that he got sent to to jail. The next day, I I got put to the late shift, and that night I got another homicide. So I mean, I oh, it was wow. a very busy year for us that year, and wow. so I really didn't have time to think about it or process it. Mm -hmm. um, they just went back to work. I'm probably an interruption. They're telling they're telling us sucks. you have to go because you have yeah. press. It's your guys. Uh, I want to properly promote this. Absolutely. I have one more question to it. talk to the guy who made this film, man. We'll this, watch this the film. The nice. film is really yeah, yeah. good. I'm sure he's, you right. know, uh, uh, it was you. really, it, th but this is fascinating. You were there. It's called The Jeffrey Dahmer Files. It opens uh, February the 15th. I uh, will, of course, Twitter it. Select theatrical beginning is at the IFC Center here in New York. Um, cable video on demand platforms. You can grab it on Comcast, Cox, Cablevision, Time Warner, Satellite TV, Direct TV, yeah. iTunes, Xbox, uh, SundanceNow.com. And uh, go to Jeff the Movie. Dot com. It's fascinating, and you can tell by listening to this. We literally had no, we would have sat here with you till yeah. fucking eleven o'clock. We want to talk, and we want to talk to the detective much. about it. He's telling interesting stories. I want to hear what the fucking f stop of the camera was. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have one more. I, it's I, really I, exciting. <laughs> I have one question for Pat. There was one one particular Patrick, whatever you prefer. There was one 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 uh, thing. A guy escaped. A boy escaped Dahmer's apartment. Went to two cops. They oh, didn't right. know what was happening. They sent this kid back, and Dahmer murdered him immediately. It was obviously a tremendous mistake. Did you know the cops that that happened to? Yes, and actually, in the middle of the interrogation, when he told me about this one, I, I said, time out. Are you trying to tell me that two Milwaukee police officers Oof. walked this kid back there? So I, I took a break. I went and told, well, I didn't talk to any bosses right away. I mm. went and got on the phone to the 3rd District, and I said, uh, did you have a, could you check back to July? Because he was uncanny about, um, dates of oh, his really? victims uncanny like most serial killers are can, i can but they said yeah a squad got sent to check for a naked asian male oh. off 25th and state i said find out who those guys are he t they told me and i said uh wake them up and tell them to get down here within half hour they were there and i told them and they were both like just 
They Crestfall. pretty no. much sent a yeah. man to his death. Well, it's a, it's, it, we I know it's more need complex more time to talk that. about it. But, yes. Uh, yes. And these are, were good men. Good men. I mean, both of my saw him put their life on the line. One guy was in a shootout with a guy who ki killed a cop. I mean, wow. these were courageous young Christian males, I would think they would say. But in the situation that they got in, when they were surrounded by a people of color, the only other person that they really believed was the other white male. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of wow. that's what I teach now in, in college. Uh, it's, it's a thing called the police complex that anybody can get. And... Like I say, it's a lot longer to get into it, and I hate to Absolutely. leave it like this. Because these know. are two fine gentlemen, but did they make a mistake? Oh, hell yeah, they yeah. made a hell of a mistake. You, gotta, you, fascinated, you we, know what the odd uh, thing is, though? If if perhaps those officers in the car would have had the proper handcuff key, he that would have gone away, away again. He would have got so, away again because this guy did not want... He was embarrassing for Yes. Him. He did not want to press charges. So it's another case that he might have just... Ended up with more dead people. There's, a, so. there's at least six or seven pivotal times throughout his murderous career where authority figures had him and he Oof. was able to fool them. I'm talking about public psychologists, uh, probation parole officers, mm -hmm. judges, uh, the building superintendent, and his own father. Wow. Who saw the bones of dead people and believed what Jeff told him, that they were the bones of a, a dog that he had found. This is fascinating Dude, stuff. You, I, 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 I got to come back. I am seeing Amazing. This. Gotta come back. Uh, your interview was so it's, good. Thank it, you for coming, too. It's on, it's, wherever it's on you demand? are. But no, but it's, just, you know, it's, it's hard to top the detective who talked to Dahmer. I mean, that, it's just it, the film was well done, I'll say that. It was excellent, and it kept me from the beginning to the end. I'm right. always looking for great uh, video on demand stuff, and this is. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm going JeffTheMovie.com to get all the information you need and uh, just a, a, a genuine. Can I make pleasure. a shameless plug? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, because I worked with Chris, he's the one who told me you got to write a book about what happened. Mm -hmm. So um, over the last year, I, I just completed a, a book that starts with the day I, I find the head in the refrigerator <laughs> and ends the day I shake his hand. Wow. And kind of tells what happened to me personally. I mean, I ended up getting a divorce out of the deal. Wow. It's called uh, More Than a Head. So I'm, a, I'm <laughs> so actually catch. looking for a publisher, uh, <laughs> someone to take a look at it. Yeah. Oh man, I, who wouldn't pick that up in a second? Yeah. Well, it's fantastic. You're unknown, and, and, and everybody's got a book they say. And you so really I'm believe like, you got divorced because of Jeffrey Dahmer? Oh no, I mean divorce. That was a big thing. My wife was the day it came. I didn't get home for like 24 hours, and when I got home, she was sitting. We were having problems anyway, but that mm. was the the straw that broke the camel's back. Would you, so at would the you, end of it, you say special thanks to Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> 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 would, would you would you uh, uh, explain in detail to other people about this case? Or would, would oh you... yeah, I've done it many times. I so. mean, I mean during the the case. Oh no, we're under your... gag order. We're not allowed to. So talk even to your wife, you wouldn't be like, so the she fucking head over problem. here. She didn't want to talk about it. Oh, she, she didn't, didn't want to okay. talk about it with the kids. Uh, right, she right. Realized we're taking the kids out of the house yeah. for those six weeks. I was yeah, alone gotcha. quite a bit. And, uh, oh man. No, homicide detectives alone just not a good thing. You watch. First 48? No, I can't watch any of that crap. Yeah? I just can't. I watch it, and it's like, why do these guys talk? You could tell that the cops are pissed off when they lawyer up. So do what pisses the cops off. <laughs> no matter how much lawyering up you do, Black Skull in the Refrigerator does not get explained away. <laughs> Trump. <laughs> Trump. All that shit we every gotta, time. we got to get them yeah, together. Yeah, they yeah, have yeah, television. Yeah, thanks so much, man. Thanks for having us. Love it. Right on. Thank you so much. Uh, Can we take a uh, The Elite Anthony Show is pretty much over. This show will be a... Stupid uh, fuck! Uh, Sal. Sal's dumb. He's just dumb, right, Sam? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeez. I thought you went, you made the signal. Oh, I know, oh, he's making oh, excuse. Did, I make oh, a, did anyone oh. see he's make a signal? No. <laughs> we have to get this plug in, is all. Yes. Sam is going to do uh, the uh, line of the day stuff. And Line of the Day is brought to you by Mask yeah, Sexual Flavors. It's really the new way to foreplay, available in four tantalizing flavors. These oral gel strips oh, yeah, will be the spark to light your bedroom flame. Visit sexualflavors.com to purchase or find a retailer near you. Sam, we'll do the Line of the Day like I just said, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Is it okay if we start now, Sal? Make them red. Is it okay if we start now? I know Sal is like, yeah. he's in charge of First making of all, sure everything turn my mic out. It's on. It's on. Oh, all right. Bobby Kelly is here, everybody. I'm here, man. I'm here for the show. The show. The Bobby and Sam show. Finally. Finally. Bob I, Kelly has come back to the after show. Finally. So is he the greatest? Is The Rock, even after all these years, and I, mm -hmm. you know, you think that something like that you grow out of, mm -hmm. he's still the shit. But you know what? All the guys in that era were the shit. If Stone Cold came back, oh. everybody would be like, that dude is the shit. I hope they fix his neck. 
so he could come back and do something. And just whoop that ass? Whoop that ass. What? 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 Did your Sal what? get yelled at by Opie? No, what, you get yelled at? Where is he? He, he walked out. Why did he get yelled at? Because he decided to end the show, like, Opie was saying goodbye to the guys who were here, the Dahmer detective. Yeah. Who was fucking amazing. Right, he I, was. I, I, I heard he was great. Just talking about having a conversation with, like, co- having a relationship with Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, this was not a news story to him. Like, he's the guy who found the black dude's head in a fridge. Mm. He didn't see it on a documentary. He saw the head. I wonder what that looks like. He, he made the face. That was, that was funny. He said, and it was a fresh cut, and he looked like this. He had his mouth open? Yeah. And the, like and he was sucking dick? The, 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 I don't know if he like was... Like he cut it off mid-blowjob? <laughs> Probably more like, <laughs> I'm so surprised I'm about to get my head cut off than the blowjob thing. So, but he had to make his mouth that way. He can't. You can't cut somebody's, kill them, and their mouth freezes that way. He had to, like... You think, open the mouth. You think Dahmer opened the mouth up yeah, to get the blowjob? Yeah, he's probably had it in his bed for a couple of days, talking to it. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> Making Yo, the mouth move and everything. Why, why? Why'd you do that? Was, why'd you kill me? He was doing a racist black accent. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing Django. Why you do that to me, Jeff? <laughs> uh, what's what your problem, dog? I like chocolate. We could have went to your chocolate factory <laughs> and had chocolate and been friends. <laughs> Suck each other's dick. Friends. Suck each other's dick every once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, you had to cut my head off and shit. Dahmer making head puppets in bed. Then he aggravated, you shut up, I'm going to put you in the freezer. I'm going to put you in the freezer. No! Don't, don't put me back in the freezer, Jeffrey. <laughs> then he, he shut the door. No! And that's how his mouth <laughs> yeah. got frozen open. And then Dahmer just chuckles to himself after. <laughs> Good one. Let me see what's on TV. <laughs> but no, so Opie's saying goodbye to those guys. Yeah. And Sal is just like, oh, show's over. Opie's got to sneak in a plug. Yeah. And Sal's just like, Wrap it up, guys. He's like you. Turn the mics blue again. Uh, this is what I don't trust any white guy who parts his hair to the side. That's my rule. That's Sal. Yeah, you part your hair to the side in 2013, you kill hookers. Do you? You're, have you, 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 you rape people. I've when when, when Robin. What's up, man? When Robert Kelly and myself, Who Kid just walked in. What's Ooh. up? What's up, kid? By the way, I'm glad Who Kid's here because. Yeah. This is a reunion from the Patty Stanger show. I kept my, my sticker on for Who Kid underneath oh, my brand new hat. <laughs> And and my, gotta, new, my new Red Sox hat, I kept one sticker off of Who Kid. Check it out, son. Ooh, that's hood right there. I like that. <laughs> I got to tell you that, you know, we always Black talk about... How we, not yet. Not till tomorrow, Who oh, Kid. Shit. You do not get this day. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I always talk about how, how management never... Uh, he doesn't get today. Today's <laughs> still ours. You know what? Today is ours. Today yeah. is ours, Bobby. Until 12 o'clock tonight, it's, it's, this is our day. But Let's go eat corn. Eat that exactly. white people. Let's yeah. go have some mayonnaise <laughs> Don't sandwiches. Don't talk to us like that, Who Kid. Sorry, sorry. How dare you? Master. Take uh, well, that bass out of your voice. Right, what do you think Dama would do with Who Kid? Oh, uh, he would love <laughs> Who Kid. Oh, my God. He would, I guarantee he wouldn't kill him. I would, he wouldn't have, he would have, he would have kept him. Well, you know how Jeffrey Dahmer, like, I, I guess oh, I saw Dahmer. him. Yeah. yeah, Jeffrey uh, Dahmer. We had the detective who did his case in. I saw a movie, and it said, and, you know, the detective would probably know better than me, right. but it said that he was trying to make sex zombies. What? And so he would drill their heads in with an electric drill. Right. And at first he didn't want to kill them. He mm. just wanted to make them his zombies so they would never leave. Yeah, and they wouldn't scream and you right. know, he could just sit there and he could suck them off. But he Damn. didn't realize that he killed So every time he killed them, then he would behead them and do the head puppet thing. Right. That we discussed. Yeah. Right. Who, kid, who kid would be who like, kid, yeah. who kid? <laughs> he'll, definitely, he'll definitely eat my dick, though, I'll tell you that. You man. think so? Would uh, it take him uh, a while? Uh, a big oh, dick, you do. Yeah. It's like a weak meal. Kielbasa. Meal for a week. You know what I'm it's a German <laughs> meal. <laughs> <laughs> you think, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but so, I want to know, did he eat the dicks? Oh, yeah, he, he did. He, yeah. So he ate the dicks. He loved yeah. those dicks. There's a lot of meat in it, especially in who He ate dicks, ass. He, ate, I think he, he had can't a, eat a lot an of, ass. How could you eat an he ass? He ate the cheek or not the asshole, like a fucking calamari? I think, <laughs> yeah. No, he did say he had a lot of black ass in his He, in, he in ate like book. an onion ring. Uh. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he would love Who Kid. But that's what I was getting at with Sal. He was in here, and he just cuts the show off. As Opie says, all right, that was great, guys. Yeah, dude. Opie and Anthony. <laughs> and Opie is just yelling. I think he le- turned the mics back on, because Opie is just like, fuck you, stupid Sal, you idiot. Why would you? Because he is a stupid kid is a problem. So. Sal's stupid. He looks very intelligent. He doesn't have his shit together. He, he looks, he all. dresses, and is, he's, uh, but, he uh, he cleans himself up. Like yeah. He's an intelligent Sal's guy. Sal's a cool guy, man. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? The cops had many interactions with Jeffrey Dahmer, and they weren't sitting there going, this is a guy <laughs> who plays head puppet in So bed. you're saying that, that Sal 
uh, gets young black men and brings them home, sucks them off, and then drills their head to try to make sex zombies. I'm saying it's absolutely wow. a possibility. Right. It's absolutely a possibility. He was hugging me the other day, and he had a barbecue sauce in his hand. I don't know. <laughs> he, ever... he was trying to lure you into a closet with barbecue sauce? Yeah, like a bottle of barbecue sauce. <laughs> he was trying to season you. You think so? I think so. If he ever invites you to his place, do not go. I don't know if he's going to like these nigga ribs, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know that the cops are not going to come and save you. If who kid, if who kid's running out of Sal's apartment in his tidy white with handcuffs on. Uh, it's who kids were versus up, Sal. He'd, he'd stroll out with a 40 and a joint. <laughs> yo, yo, this guy's trying to eat my dick, man. <laughs> yo, yo, this motherfucker, I just knocked him the fuck out. I, he tried to drill in my head. Right. And then he tried to, he tried to eat my dick. And <laughs> whose word are the cops going to take? Sal's or who kids? Sal's. Come on, man. I'm going to take Sal's. 